let me start. Hey, so Mark here from Rock and Load. This evening, I'm joined all the way from South Africa by blues rocker, Mr. Kenny Hughes. Kenny's been dropping a highly addictive singles left, right and center, and he's with us this evening to tell us all about his plans for world domination. Kenny, how are you doing, brother? I'm so well in yourself, man. Yeah, all good, all good. Uh, yeah, coming into the winter here now, so it's we're starting to feel the effects of the colder weather coming in and life's getting very real. You know, our summer is actually just kicking in and it couldn't have been at a better time, honestly. I was so tired of the winter for one year, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm, I'm jealous. Although I'm, I'm heading away on a holiday in a couple of weeks' time, so I'm heading off to the sunshine myself. So that'll be a rare change. It's been a couple of years since that's happened, so I'm looking forward to it. And where are you headed? Going to the States. Going to oh, really? Yeah, yeah. See how the other okay. half live. Yeah. And what are your plans? What are your plans exactly? Sunshine. Guitar shop. <laughs> sunshine. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's that's a great so idea. <laughs> Not, nothing better, you know. So, yeah. Just a bit of it. Um, just genuinely a change of scenery. Uh, it was, yeah. I was supposed to have done it back in 2020. Obviously, then the pandemic arrived, so that never happened. So, now we are... Uh, Three years later, going to make it happen, or two years later anyway. Yeah, I feel like everyone's dreams and ideas and goals and stuff took a bit of a backseat, you know, for Absolutely. a second there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're all in the same boat. At least we all shared it together, you know. Some, some unfortunately, yeah. have tougher times than others, but yes, we all we all went through that nightmare together. Yeah, we all felt the pinch, eh? Yeah, yeah. So listen, we'll cover a bit of ground again. Um, Let's go back to your uh, history with the guitar and Music, I think you originally said you came from a, a family that had a real passion for music. Your m- mother and father were really, really into their their blues rock. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I grew up with probably the the, the household favorite would have been Dire Straits. Um, I grew up with Sultans of Swing is basically the reason I started playing guitar mm. in the first place. But not just that. I mean, I grew up with the likes of John Fogarty from Credence. I grew up with Eric Clapton. And then eventually, when I started finding my own way, um, I started listening to a lot of Jimi Hendrix, a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, so the very, very similar story to a lot of guitar players, I'm sure. But it's, yeah. it's my story still. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, I claim I it. <laughs> I know, I know. And tell me then, so like, w- w- what age did you actually pick up the guitar? Well, I started off on the drums when I was nine years old. I played drums for a few years. Um, and yeah, so the guy that taught me drums taught everything. And um, because he did that, he had a lot of students. He put us into bands. And then once a year, each band that he made uh, would get a chance to play one or two songs at a showcase for all the parents. So he, they could see what they'd been up to all year. And um, this one year, I, I believe I was 12 years old. And I was a drummer in the band, of course. And it just looked like the guitarist was having a lot more fun than I was. So then... Yeah. I picked up the guitar from there, man. You were sitting in the background in the darkness thinking, this is, this is not good. You know, I, I need, yeah. to out, need to be out there swinging that thing around my neck. I'm sitting here sweating, doing all the work, <laughs> carrying this band. Come yeah. on, man. I also I also want to hang back, look cool and play a note here and there, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> and so, like, would you say that there was any particular players who sort of heavily influenced you in your younger years? In my younger years, definitely, uh, Mark Knopfler was pretty much what I, that was my idea of what a, what a guitarist um, and vocalist should be, you know. Uh, if you're going to be doing both, you need, you need to have this certain composure about yourself. You need to be able to manage on the fly, basically. I mean, yeah. I've, I've never been into the, I've never been into the whole showmanship side of things, you know what I mean? Like the guys jumping around all over stage. Um, I am a, I am an ACDC fan, um, but the way the way Angus runs around on stage is—I I don't know—it just never really appealed to me. I'd be more the, the laid-back kind of guy. I mean, like Clapton, you know what I mean? He didn't have to move around a lot. He let his guitar do the dancing. Yeah, yeah, and, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And so, with yeah. with an awfuler sort of influence, are you a big finger picker? Oddly enough, no. I mean, I can I can manage, I can get by, but it's just one of those things. All of my all of my teachers were pick players themselves, so that was definitely sort of instilled at a young age. Was you have to play with a guitar pick. There's no real other way to do it. Yeah. Only much later on did I did I come across. I actually never even knew that Mark Knopfler played finger style. Yeah. Um, for most of my adolescence, because I just never paid that much attention to his playing. It just it sounded so good to me. 
Yeah. Uh, eventually, yeah. we started getting like music DVDs and stuff. Then you could see he was actually doing the thumb index finger type thing. Like, okay, wow, that's surprising. And yeah, um, yeah that was a that was a bit of a revelation <laughs> for me for sure. Yeah, it's it's a tricky thing to try and pick up at a later age, isn't it? If you're sort of getting into it at a younger age, it can feel some more more natural. But when you're so used to maybe years after years playing with a pick and then trying to learn either the hybrid picking or finger picking technique, it's can be quite tricky. It can definitely be challenging. And the thing is, I mean, it, it's like a bad habit. You know what I mean? Once yeah. you once you've got that instilled, it's so difficult to get rid of it. Yeah. Um. You might as well just make it your own. You know, if you've got a bad habit, but still sounds good, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I remember seeing an interview with Vi and he sort of said that a guy asked him, you know, when you're not good at something, do you do you concentrate on it and practice it? He says, if I'm not good at it, I'm not good at it. I don't practice it. I practice what I'm good at, you know? Mm. So why why spend multiple hours trying to perfect something that you know you, you can't really do? So I suppose every, every guitarist has their own approach. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I've got more of a sloppy style myself. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not incredibly technical at all. And alternate picking has always been a very challenging thing for me, mm-hmm. and to this day, it still is. So I, you know, I just have a weird attack, and I've heard that I've got a weird right <laughs> hand. My right hand, my rhythm is weird and all over the show. But hey, it's worked for me so far, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because um, everybody has their own way of of, of playing. I, you talk about sloppy players, and you think about people like Slash and Joe Perry and um even jimmy page you know you would never yeah, say that definitely. they're very technically sort of uh proficient players but some of the best guitarists out there 100 percent, man 100 percent. and i mean there's already a john petrucci you know what i mean so yeah. there's yeah. this there's no need to be chasing that dream um unless you want to i mean you do you at the end of the day yeah but absolutely. if it's if it's if it's getting in the way of the way that you already play and there's no real point in pursuing it. You know what I mean? You might as well find your flavor, stick with it, and you'll get there eventually anyway. Yeah. And so would you always describe yourself then as a blues rocker? Have you always been going down that path when you chose to write your own stuff? Um, in a, At least initially, yes. With every song I write, I, I, it's always got that blues rock element to it, for sure. But... Um, as I mentioned last time, I really want to bring in more funk. So there's there's a lot more there's a lot of a, a funky vibe to my playing now, for sure. And definitely, I have mm. that approach when I write a song now, especially the guitar parts that I I'd, I'd like to bring in that little funk element. Again, it's it's sloppy in a educated way, I guess. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. And, so, and where's yeah. that come from? Where's that influence come from? The funky influence. Yeah. Most likely the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, long before I even knew John Frusciante's name, I was a I was a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan, and he's just got this way about him. You know what I mean? Just that those sixteenth notes that he plays, and so percussively. I, I've always been drawn to that. It's always been so beautiful to me. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, all of the players that I listen to have that element. You know what I mean? The, the, in all of their solos, there is some point where they've got like a triplet a quick triplet um, feel or a quick 16th note pass or whatever. And it's just, it just always sounded so great. I just want to do. Yeah. Something just sure. stands out to you in their music and then you sort of resonate with it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I think everyone's got their thing that draws them in a particular song, you know, uh, a friend of mine who's a bassist says that he always hears the drums first. And I mean, it makes sense. If you think about him being a bassist, he has to follow the drums. Yeah. Um, for me, it's more the melody. I, I get the melody almost immediately. And that's because I'm so used to improvising over whatever song I'm listening to. That's how I practice. I put on a random song and I just try and improvise over it. Try to find out what the key is. Not so much the chords as as such, just the melody and trying to mimic the melody on the guitar. Yeah. It gives yeah, it a bit yeah. of a vocality, I guess you could say. Yeah, I'm probably quite similar in that respect. I think I've always been drawn into the melody of a song and even sometimes maybe miss out on the vocals and the, and the lyrics of a song because I'm so sort of wrapped up in the melody. And I would recommend a song to somebody and then they come back and go, like, are you trying to send a, a subliminal message to me, mate? Yeah, like, what, what are you trying to tell me, man? What are you talking about? I don't, haven't even heard the lyrics, you know, don't don't even know what you're talking about, you know. But Sorry. Yeah. It's, not my uh, intent, not my yeah, intent, I swear. It's, it's all the melody for me as well. You know, I, I, it's the first thing I hear yeah. in a song and... Uh, it resonates with me, you know, right away or not, or not, you know, you, you, you can hear a song in 15 seconds and you know, whether it's, you, you like it or not, you know, definitely hundred percent. Yeah. And so tell me, I what can are you usually tell on? by the intro. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 What, what are you working on currently? 
I just recorded, wow, what was it? Probably two weeks ago. I just recorded a new single. Um, but before I'm going to be releasing that one, there's another one on the back burner that's already, I literally just got the master back in last week. So that's going to be releasing pretty soon. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a weird season now going into like people are getting ready for Christmas and all that type of stuff, which is weird to me. You know, we're only in October, <laughs> but everyone complains about that anyway. Um, so I'll probably be releasing that song uh, towards the end of Jan, which I feel is just a good way to kick the new year off with a good momentum. Yeah. And um, there's a bunch of ideas around it. You know, we're, we're contemplating the idea of a music video. We're thinking about the artwork that we're going to go into the song and trying to make a thing around that. So a bit of admin. And yeah. aside from that, I'm actually busy organizing a tour to Germany. So it's going to be my first official international tour you know i've played in mozambique and stuff but i don't really count that it's right <laughs> next door so um yeah it's gonna be my first overseas trip in my life and i'm just fortunate that it's music that's taking me there yeah absolutely absolutely and um are you doing like a, is it a germany specific tour that you're you're targeting yeah definitely so the reason i'm going to germany first i mean i wanted to go to uh the states first uh, just because it's always been a dream of mine to play in New Orleans. It's always been a dream of mine to walk the streets of Nashville with a guitar in my hand. Um, but it is just so costly, especially, I I'm not sure for you going on holiday, if it is a costly endeavor for you, but from my side where I am, just getting the performance visa to be able to go play yeah. and earn some money for it is, it's ridiculous. I, I can't really see how it could at all be profitable, at least at this point, you know what yeah. I mean? So maybe, maybe once I <clears> built a bit more of a name for myself or whatever, and I can actually guarantee, okay, cool, we're going to have 200 people in the club, then then I can start asking my figures I need, you know? But yeah. until then, it's it's I would still will do it, and I'm still going to do it. It's just going to be out of my own pocket. No. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? I, I've had friends and, and bands from the UK who were relatively successful in their own right, but, you know, same hurdles, trying to go to the USA, which massive visa fees, especially when you're performing. I think they were, God, they supported the likes of Kiss and all in Europe and Deep Purple and stuff like that there. And there's massive outlays that bands have to put in place. Then when you take those sort of um, commitments, you know, for example, you buy a lot of merch because you think to yourself, well, we're going to be selling a lot of merch. So all that has to be paid for and produced and, um, you know, the, the, the numbers add up very quickly and it, it's a case of trying to work out, the, the, are they financially viable? You know, because it's tough. Yeah. Obviously, you just, you just don't know. There's no guarantees in life at all with these things. That's the thing, man. And I've heard some horror stories about guys that got a guy on the other side of the pond that organized everything for them and organized the shows, did all the advertising, whatever. They land and their visa's not right because he didn't do the visa. Yeah. Or he's just a no-show. They can't get hold of him anymore, and they've paid him a bunch of money to get all this stuff in place, and then he vanishes on that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you get all those horror stories as well, which can be a bit of a deterrent, but yeah. I won't let it get me down. <laughs> well, you know, the, the one thing the music industry is, it, it creates a thick skin. You have to have a thick skin to, to, to you got to, man. keep your head it going. Takes, time. It takes the first couple of shows where there's literally no one in the audience I played a show at a place up in Pretoria um, right at the beginning of when I just started out. Um, I played for the cashier and the guy <laughs> manning the pizza oven. It was yeah. those two people, literally. And yeah. um, you do a couple of those gigs, you're going to walk away with a bit of an opinion. You know what I mean? You're going to be like, oh, well, Humble. now I'm just doing it for me. Clearly, yeah, I'm not doing experience. it for you. Yeah, yeah definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely. It's, uh, if you can make it through something like that, I feel like you're, you're probably going to get out on the other side all right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and um, it, it's really about just tenacity at that stage then just keeping your head down and believing in yourself, you know, that you've, you've, you have what it takes to, to come out the other side, I suppose, you know. For sure, man. But I mean, being a full time muso as well, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of shows I play every show I can, wherever they'll have me, I'll play, you know, and they can't all be great. Yeah. So you can go for you can play 10 shows where you were sort of an afterthought or a funny little footnote um but then you play one gig just you play one show where the crowd is just amazing they're invested with every song and you get a great response afterwards and it's just like that's why i'm doing this that's the reason and it just lifts you out of you forget about the 19 shows that were horrible you know what i mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah. absolutely it's all uh, that one sort of positive experience can can energize you for another 12 months i suppose Definitely. Yeah, mm. for sure.
and I mean, you you just remember that show for as yeah. long as it is. Yeah, yeah. hang on. And to you it. remember those <laughs> shows. Every whenever you think about, okay, cool, I'm really not in the mood to go play this coffee shop now, where I'm pretty much just playing background music. It's like, okay, cool, but. You could have been in an office. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is yeah. still it's still a cool job, man. Yeah, it's it's. I ask the question quite often with a lot of people, and it's it's not an easy one to answer. But it's like, what is the ac- actual expectation today for a modern musician as far as what is success? And it's going to be mm. a different answer for everybody. But I, I think personally, if you're able to do it full time, uh, if you're lucky enough to sort of pay your bills by doing it and, and travel and you know, see the world and come back and tell those stories, and you, you, that has to be a, a a relative success. Definitely, man. At the end of the day, it's just um, no no one's a musician because they have to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're a musician because you want to be. And whatever you do, whether you're an artist or a dancer or an actor, whatever, what whatever you're doing, if you're doing what you want to be doing and you can actually survive that way, you've got nothing to complain about absolutely yeah yeah i think just sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves um the expectation on what 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 the reality of of being a musician should be but these tiktok stars are ruining it for everybody (laughs) we don't talk about it man (laughs) (laughs) so listen we, we talked a little bit last time about gear tell me again what is your sort of staple gear setup Okay, well, if I'm playing, I, I use the same board for everything, right? Um, whether it's an acoustic show or an electric show, because I've got one board that I carry around. It's got all my pedals on it. They are just some of the pedals I don't use when I'm doing an acoustic show. Um, so the acoustic that I use is a Cole Clark Fat Lady 3 AC, I believe it is. So it's basically a Fat Lady 3. Um, by far, by far the best acoustic I've played on. My opinion is biased because it's mine. Yeah. But that's why I bought it. You know what I mean? I picked it up and I was like, this guitar is mine. <laughs> it's, it's 100% mine. And so the way I got that, that scene guitar... out of Wayne's World, was it? Where she will be mine. Yeah. She will be mine. Exactly. Exactly that. Um, it was actually a family friend of mine's guitar. And he was very, very proud of it. Um, I hassled him for well over a year, telling him, I'm going to buy that guitar. It's going to be my guitar. He's like, no, you're not. It's, it's mine, man. <laughs> And eventually he just succumbed. I was sitting playing um, a song I wrote, actually. I played it for him. He liked it. And I was like, you know what? That guitar does suit you, man. Let's make a deal. Yeah. And so that's how I got that guitar. Um, had it now for probably going on going on eight years now. And she's showing her age, man. She's full of scratches and patches of varnish missing. And the neck is just worn, but beautiful. Yeah. Um, the battle scars of a well-used instrument. It's just lovely, man. I always think of Willie Nelson's Trigger. You know, have you have you seen a picture of Trigger? It's ridiculous. Dude. Is the one with a hole in it? <laughs> it's the one with a hole in it. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. two holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that's my acoustic, my electric. I play with a, um, a American Special Stratocaster um, Fender, obviously, and beautiful, beautiful instrument. Ca- uh, Candy Apple Red. She's the love of my life. Her name's mm-hmm. Scarlet. So. <laughs> yeah shout out <laughs> and still three three single coils in that guitar yeah three single coils texas special pickups just okay. all the mojo came standard with a jumbo frets which i'm really really grateful for because i have my mom's old electric that i well started off on and my dad's acoustic but the electric specifically has very slim frets even still i haven't changed them i probably won't just for originality's sake yeah but very very slim frets and the first time i picked up my strat uh it was 18th birthday present actually most amazing parents um first time i picked it up first chord i played it was like whoa that is just butter isn't it yeah and um yeah so from from then on jumbo frets have been the go-to for me yeah, it was funny. Um, I, I I recently played a it was an SRV replica, one of his signature models, and I had tall, thin frets, and it was I couldn't couldn't get used to it because I have so many see, of the guitars. The yeah, so many guitars that I have now tend to have either medium jumbo or jumbo frets, so the mm. tall, thin was quite alien. You know, it's been such a yeah, long time. Yeah, I suppose you'd get used to it if you if you gave it enough of a try, but it just doesn't feel right off the bat, right? Yeah. It's weird and it's hard to imagine these guys playing with these things. You know, I remember um, reading that Hendrix, when he played the guitar back in the day, was playing with eights, like string gauge. Eights. You know, because, because that was standard back in the day, back in the sort of 60s and stuff. You know, you, you would never Goodness have thought gracious. that, you know, but really thin. 
wow yeah crazy like yeah that's crazy yeah that's crazy I've, i mean i've played with nines and nines were just all over the show <laughs> you know what i mean yeah you can it's... bend three steps up it's crazy it's like what what is this but it's not it's not meaty enough i play with 11s actually just because i can feel it now yeah I, I like the guitar the, yeah. it depends on the guitar i suppose um i've got guitars with 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 trams on them and if you're using a guitar with trams 11s can feel really heavy where if you mm -hmm. have a more of a um jesus i forgot the name <laughs> fixed bridge um mm -hmm. you know 11s it just feels right you know the, the tension yeah, feels so much better yeah. you know so it's uh, but I think uh, I suppose it depends on how much you're playing. I, I remember reading that Stevie used to play with 13s, but generally mm. over the course of a tour, he would probably drop down a little bit because his hands were really hurting by the end. Yeah, but that is ridiculous. Like 13s, man. Mm. I've never even played 13s on an acoustic. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's 13s rough. It's like a suspension bridge cable. What are you, yeah, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> Crazy. Why I are know. you working so hard, man? <laughs> I know, just because he could, I suppose, just because he could. <laughs> just because he off. could, but he was an alien too, man. You know, like Jimi yeah. Hendrix as well. He was, he was from here. I don't know where he came from. <laughs> yeah, I know. It just it, it's hard. To, it's hard to actually fathom, isn't it, when you think about the time when Hendrix was recording those songs. You know, such a long time ago, but Jesus, they've stood the test of time, um, un think, unbelievably. Yeah. You know, and people today still struggling to learn those things. You know, it's just uh, my head can't my head can't wrap around it sometimes. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, um, my favorite and probably will always be my favorite Jimi Hendrix track is uh, Castles Made of Sand. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's so beautiful, man. And the, the fact that he played the solo backwards and then they just rewound the tapes to get that reverse echo vibe. Because, I mean, nice. now I've got a I've got a DD7 on my board, a Boss DD7, which is an amazing delay pedal. But it's got a reverse echo on it, you know what I mean? So you can get that effect now. He had to he had the idea for that he was like yeah. i wonder what it would sound like if it sounds like i'm playing it backwards he's probably you know I mean? wiped off his face on drugs when he was thinking about it <laughs> i think he was wiped off his face on drugs the minute he took his first breath <laughs> i yeah. feel like oxygen was his <laughs> drug you know what I mean? yeah 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 crazy guy crazy, uh, I read crazy. His autobiography and it was it was an amazing story you know just quite quite a story just such a, a crazy time to grow up in you know as a a black man in America as well, and then coming across yeah. England and trying to make it, you know, it's unbelievable story. And then pulling it off the way yeah. he did. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And in such a short time ah, as well. Great. We we only had him for a few years as a successful musician as well. You sort of wonder yeah. what could have been if he had a, hung around a bit longer. That's the thing. On Wednesday, I'm turning 27 myself. And then I'm as old as Hendrix was when he died. It's a, it's a very scary thing to me because I feel like I am light years away from anything <clears throat> close to what he achieved you know what i mean and he was the same age it's crazy yeah and i think you told me amp wise you use a vox is that right i do i use a vox ac15 mm -hmm. um beautiful amp lovely lovely tone it's honestly to me it's pretty much got all the tone of an ac30 but it's half the weight so yeah. you know especially if you crank it um, and these days, every venue you play, they're miking up the amp anyway. So there's really no reason anymore to be carrying around a 50 or 100 watt amp. It just it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you've got it, great. It doesn't fit in my car, unfortunately. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but what we did was I had a friend um, up in Joburg, Johannes, and he was a tinkerer, to say the very least. He, a bit of a luthier, a bit of a gear junkie bit of electronics expertise and that type of stuff so we pulled out the the original celestian greenback which these days are made in china anyway so it's, it's not by any means original we ripped that out we put in a 1984 i believe it is um marshall some kind of marshall speaker and it just it made a world of difference yeah you know what I mean? so it's got all the warmth I could ever want from an amp needs a service now though the the valves are hissing just a little bit <laughs> yeah, so yeah. needs a service has needed a service for the better part of two years now but yeah, okay. it still sounds good <laughs> yeah it's um it's, it's it's one of those things because we I think I mentioned it last time but there's so many variables in guitar playing you know you, you've got your guitar you've got your pickups you got your cables you got your amp you got your speakers you got your pedals everything has an impact on on your sound and people Definitely. quite quite often forget about maybe something as simple as changing the speakers in a, in a cab 
and how how that can really change your sound as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I, we spoke about we spoke about the rabbit hole of just pedals as well. Yeah, um, once yeah. once you open that can of worms, it's just wow. Yeah, you can end like, up I, anywhere. I'm still like I'm addicted to YouTube, and I'm every day. I'm if I'm working on the computer, I have it on in the background. And have you seen that pedal show? Are you familiar with that? I it's think on, so. On YouTube, two English guys, uh, Mike and Christ, what's his name? Dan, Mike and Dan from that pedal show. I believe uh, so. Yeah, those two guys, like they, there's nothing they don't know about. You know, when it comes to a lifetime of obviously working within the industry, um, playing guitars, but just speaking and dealing with amp manufacturers and pedal manufacturers and really go into detail on these things. Christ, you know, like you think you know something about something until you watch an hour long video on compressor pedals or an hour, an hour long yeah. video on, on tube screamers. And it's like, exactly. my God, you know, because there's <laughs> so many, so, deep, man. yeah, so many things. Then are you even just something as simple as a tube screamer and the impact of, 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 where it's placed in a pedal lineup, you know, stuff like that there, pre or mm. post, you know, another overdrive pedal or stacked and like, my God, it is it is beyond a rabbit hole. It's crazy. Yeah. Where does it end, man? Yeah. Where does it end? Yeah. You know? being, being and broke. Hendrix, <laughs> Hendrix walked out on stage with a fuzz face and a wah and he was like, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, that's Let's it, go. That's it. Just stuck them under his arm, walked on stage. All right, I got a show to play, man. Yeah, there, there was there was a brilliant video they done the other day. Um, they interviewed Paul Reed Smith, and it was oh, really yeah. really interesting because obviously coming from the point of view where those guys are and the, the level of knowledge that those guys have, having a conversation with somebody like Paul Reed Smith, and like Paul, they just released a few pedals. Paul Reed Smith, you know, and it's not really their normal thing, but. The guys love the pedals because of what they do. They do a very specific job very very well. And mm -hmm. Paul himself would say he doesn't use pedals. You know, literally, he is a guy who plugs a guitar in, into an amp, and that's the sound that he wants, you know. That's and I suppose got, there's yeah. a lot of people out there like that who don't want to go Definitely. down that rabbit hole of, of pedal boards and multiple pedals. Definitely, man. The thing is, I've always, um, I've always been either solo or I've played in a trio formation, which means that my guitar has to do a lot of different things. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, it, in the verses, it needs to have a really good clean tone. Um, in the choruses and bridges, possibly, it needs a bit of overdrive. That's why I use a. I've got a TS eight hundred eight that I use, uh, which to me is, in my opinion, the best tube screamer. Um, don't shoot me. Um, so that just gives me that bit of extra punch for a chorus, you know. And then when a solo comes in, um, like I told you last time, I recently got myself a fuzz face, but I've always loved the sound of fuzz just because it's so overly aggressive yeah. and especially in a in a trio formation where you just got bass and drums and then that guitar comes screaming through oh man i love it so i'm definitely a bit of a pedal user but it's never been overboard for me um the board that i have now is probably going to be my board for a really long time you know um, yeah the the actual pedals themselves might swap out but it'll always be wah overdrive fuzz maybe delay you know what i mean i've got the delay on my board i use it all the time in my solo shows but with a band i hardly ever use it i'll maybe use it with one or two songs just for a bit of flavor yeah but that's going to be my setup you know what i mean that's going to be my setup for a really long time and i remember you told me last time that you you got yourself a little centaur copy yeah a copy yeah yeah like um uh, it's highly recommended. It's from you can get them from Wish, which is a Chinese company, and they're about thirty five yeah. pound to buy. And a guy in Belfast was was selling one, so I thought, well, pick it up, see what it's like. And it is really lovely. It's it's uh, just it does exactly what it says in the tin. Transparent overdrive doesn't really color the, the the tone too much, just a little bit, but it adds a little bit more hair for you. And okay. uh, so yeah, and I, I'm I'm a bit like yourself. Um, I love to get a good sort of mid gain type thing going on you know from where you can turn the volume down and be nice and clean and then crank it up a little bit spin more of a rhythm type gain and then just Definitely. sort of build on that that with with um, one or two pedals and then mm. if, if, if i have a different amp set up for the heavy stuff if i want to go heavy but it's just trying to find that balance there's there's so many good quality amps out there and so many good quality pedals you know it you're constantly as we have discussed before down that rabbit hole trying to figure out what is the right fit and just like just recently, just recently there, I've seen a couple of bits of gear for sale locally, like a Victory V40 uh, Deluxe, mm. which is um, 
their clean platform amp. And I'm really curious to see what that sounds like. It's supposed to be very much like your um, American sort of Fender clean sort of stuff. Yeah. But, to an overdriven sort of point, you know. Okay. Wow. But, but, but where do you where do you go? Like where do you where do you start? Where do you stop? The price involved in these things is also expensive, you know. That's the thing. That's the thing. Especially if you have a significant other in your life, then you need to run everything by them. You know. Did you really need this amp? Yes. Yes, yes I did. Yes. <laughs> well, the funny thing was, the, there was a video on earlier on today, and she saw the the amp in the back, and she was oh, that looks lovely. She get yourself one of those. I said, well, there's a second hand one down the road, one for eleven hundred pounds, and she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never mind yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i retract my statement yeah. forget that forget that yeah 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 so they, they, they don't realize the price of these things and uh, i don't ask her about her that's shoes so it's all good it's all good yeah you see you see that's just mutual respect right there man exactly. that's the y way yin and done. yang yin and yang you've got to get that's that balance the way, life. Dude. that's <laughs> the only way man <laughs> what's what's the most recent bit of gear that you have treated yourself to um actually there's one pedal i didn't mention it is uh the Polyphonic Octave Generator by Electro Harmonics. Electro okay. Harmonics Pog. I love that thing. <clears throat> I love it especially for the solo shows because even with an acoustic, I can use it to get a bass line. Um, and that's just, it's opened up a whole new world. You know what I mean? It adds so much depth because I use the looper as well. I use a Boss RC30. And so there's a lot of layering going on just to build up a song and stuff. I really love that process as well. It's very cool, very creative. Um, but since I got that pog and I could just add that, I mean, have you ever have you ever played around with one of them before? No, I haven't. No. So you've got your lower octave, you've got your dry signal, and then you've got an upper octave, and you can blend them as you want to. So if you bring all three up to around twelve, maybe one o'clock, it makes your guitar sound almost like an organ, which is just ridiculous. I love yeah. that. Or you can take out your dry and your upper um, octave, and you can just boost the low octave, and then you get an honest to goodness bass you know what i mean you can you can put a bass line over your chord progression and it's just ridiculous if you ever get the chance to try one out please do yourself a favor it's such a fun toy such yeah, a great yeah. thing to work yeah with. yeah it's um I, i've never never really bothered with the likes of octavers or uh, i'm curious about the drop pedal i think is it the i remember who makes it now as well digitech maybe drop pedal where you can have the Drop, drop the either drop down to a D or drop down a whole octave as well, depending on what what key you want to play in. So if you're in a standard okay. tuning, you can you can um, program it to play in alternatives. So you could play it in a C or a, an A, open A, you know. So wow, you know, saves you having to go for a six, a seven string or an eight string guitar. So a yeah, lot of people, sure. a lot of people using those who don't want to change the guitars, obviously as well. Okay. Yeah, so there's so many things. Around it. Even today, uh, I think it's such a great time to be a guitarist because the equipment out there is so good. You know, it's Definitely. such a high quality as well. Whereas back in the day, 10, 10, 20 years ago, obviously you would have to pay serious money to get that sort of technology. For sure. There's one pedal I really want to get and we don't have them in South Africa. I've looked pretty much everywhere online. Um, I can't find one. It basically works like a sustain pedal for a keyboard. Um, so... You can play a chord. After you've played the chord, you step on that pedal and it'll keep that chord just going. And then you yeah. can solo over that one chord that's just hanging. That's oh, yeah, so, yeah. so cool. Yeah. So I'd really like to try and get my hands on one of them. Um, it's probably going to cost me a penny though. <laughs> oh, really? Is it pricey? Yeah. Is it, is well, it I mean, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to import it and then it's going to be whatever the pedal costs plus yeah. 50%, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Slight I, problem. one of the recent things that I bought the wee while back there was a, a Schecter guitar with a Sustainiac pickup in it. Are you familiar with that? Okay. I'm you know, not at all. Sustainiac holds the note, so basically, um, you can hold any any note on the guitar, and it'll it'll hold it uh, inf infinitely uh, until the battery runs out effectively. So you know, That's if you're crazy. if you're soloing, you can, if you're on a whammy bar or something, you can bounce around the whammy bar. And the note just keeps its its consistency the whole time. That's what that's what Bai and Satriani so cool. have in their guitars, you know, and that's why they're able to do those mad effects with the the, the trams and stuff. But that answers has, that question. <laughs> yeah, it, it also has a wee switch which allows it gives you like harmonics. So um, if there's like a um, I think it's two two variants. One's a really high harmonic and one's a low one. So if you're just even playing a chord, these harmonics start ringing out from it as well. You know, it's just it sounds like natural. Uh, feedback coming through from the amp and stuff 
Wow. But it's an amazing pickup, but uh, it is uh, active. You know, it's a battery operated one. So unless yeah. you have, you need to have that in the guitar. But Ed O'Brien from um, Radiohead has one in his Strat, you know, okay. just, which, which just helps with that ambient music. And um, the guy from Muse uses one as well. So it's not just the, the shredders using them. Okay. Yeah, that's so cool. a, That's an option. Again, yeah, that's an it's, it's, an, it's another thing to, just for a bit of ambient creativity on a guitar, you know, one of these things you can add to, to a machine and have a bit of fun with. Definitely. We've actually got a luthier up in Joburg as well called Grant Fouchier. He is an absolute wizard. Yeah. Um, he specializes mm-hmm. basically in Strat copies, but they are ludicrous. They yeah. are so, so good. And he's exactly the type of guy that would tinker around with that type of thing, you know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah, yeah. If you were, yeah. if you are in South Africa <clears throat> and you want to have that done to your guitar, Grant is probably your man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's so many good guys out there, and it's, it's interesting as well. Now, I think I mentioned to you before about this sort of demand for high end guitars now, and um, especially in the UK market. If you look at the guitar shops over here, it just seems mm. to be packed with really, really high end guitars from Fender custom shops to American luthiers, and you know, further afield, these guitars need to be. Oh five to fifteen thousand pounds and you sort of wonder where where's the market and where's the appetite for these guitars is it just collectors yeah. or people who are actually playing them mm, mm. that's always a question right because yeah. the only people that can really afford those type of things is the businessman who yeah. likes to play guitar on the weekends you know <laughs> just it just wants it sitting good in, in, in the corner of his, his five million pound apartment yeah. in london you know he might strum it as he climbs into bed and listen to the sustain for three hours, you know? <laughs> well, he gets up in the morning, it's probably still ringing, you know? <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. If, if you could buy yourself something, what would it be? What would be your uh, your ideal toy? My ideal toy? I've always had... Um... <laughs> it's going to sound so hypocritical because I just said you don't need massive amps, but I've always, always wanted a deluxe reverb. Yeah. So... I mean, that's just, to me, that's the gold standard of what an amp should be. Yeah. So if I ever come across one and I actually still have a kidney to sell, that'd be that'd be what I go for, yeah. Yeah. How about yeah. yourself, man? I mean, you've already got beautiful toys right behind you. So I know, what would you get? You could get anything. Probably amps. I think, I think it's the thing is that, you know, it's, you can buy as many guitars as you as you want, but if, you, if you're still playing through one or two amps, then they're all going to sound relatively similar. You know, so mm. I think maybe uh, a variation in amps would be really good to just to expand on that. I bought myself, I think it was a Fender Deluxe Reverb a year, maybe a year ago, second hand. It was, it was the second or third version of it. It wasn't the most recent one. And it was a single one by 12 or whatever it was. But Christ, it, it was face melting, you know, the, the volume. It, it literally, <laughs> the, thing, yeah. the problem was that uh, like it, it went from nothing to full volume at, at, at when you turned it to two. And then yeah. so I could barely sit in the room with it because it was so loud. But then mm. if I turned it to four, the actual volume didn't increase that much. You know, it just oh, wow. maybe a little bit more headroom, but it just didn't go. So it was a weird sort of amp for me, not one mm. for a bedroom player, definitely for somebody definitely. on stage, you know? Yeah, for sure. But I think for there's sure. so many, so many nice amps now, modern amps and modern makers who are sort of doing stuff like it, like the Victory amps or um, the Mesa Boogies and stuff like that there who have their, their own versions sure. of these things. So it's, it's too much choice, man. Have you ever checked out uh, Doctor Z by any chance? Uh, I haven't. Haven't got a chance to play one. There's nobody locally that sells them. I'll tell a lie. There might be one shop that maybe stocks them, but I haven't had the chance yet to, to pop my head into there. But uh, I've I've seen them on YouTube and stuff, and people rave about they them. They are incredible. Uh, we got a local player, Dan Petlansky. You've probably heard of Dan. Petlansky, yes, actually. yes, yes, yes. So he used to play. He plays with Honeybee amps or something now. But he used to have a Dr. Z Easy G50. It's basically a 50 watt head. Yeah. Oh man, that that tone is just it's, it's, it could rip the paint off your walls. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just but Dan's, Dan's tone beautiful. is killer. So it is absolutely killer. It's always been killer, though. You mm. know what I mean? Every time I've seen it, doesn't matter what. And that's the thing, like it's, yeah, sure, you can have all the gear in the world, but at the end of the day, Stevie was right, man, a lot of the tone comes from your hands. Yeah. And every mm-hmm. time I've heard Dan play, it's so good. So, um, yeah, I don't know, he's he's just got that touch, I guess, man. Yeah, he's a monstrous player, so he is, really is. He really is, yeah. yeah. 
he so, makes us he makes us proud <laughs> yeah 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 like I, I, he's I, he's came across the uk so many times unfortunately i'm i'm on, a, on an island the other side of the uk so i haven't seen him yet in, in the flesh but i would love to see him someday so hopefully we could either get his ass to ireland or i'll get myself to england next time he comes across <laughs> Have to, sure, figure it out. have to figure it out. I actually wanted to ask you last time um, that our network was so horrible that every time I asked you, it sort of like broke up. I almost took it as a bit of an omen. Don't jinx it. <laughs> Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to come to Ireland, man. I would really, really love to come come jam in Ireland sometime. What's the music scene there like? It's good. It's good. It's strong. Um, obviously, there's north and south. You have Dublin, which is the capital city of the south, and Belfast, capital city of the north, and there's a really strong music scene uh, in Ireland, and obviously blues rock is a staple in Ireland. You know, if you've, from bands like Thin Lizzy and Roy Gallagher and Gary Moore, all those guys. You know, so yeah, it's it's our bread and butter over here. So, um, you know, it's just a case of managing your expectations. What 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 do you want from the the, the experience? But uh, there's there's always going to be a crowd every time there's live music in a bar in Ireland. There's people there. You know, so. Yeah, it's it's a good place to to um to experience for sure. Yeah, for sure. Because I was thinking, um, I don't I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard a rumor or somehow via the grapevine that if I were to go play in Ireland, I wouldn't need a performance visa. I could just go on a holiday visa and play. Oh, really? Actually. Okay, possibly. Irish the Irish don't give a shit about much, so possibly <laughs> we're too easy going that oh, way, you, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I would just have to make sure, but I know that um, the, the UK in general is a lot more affordable. If you have to get a performance visa, it's a lot more affordable to do it. Yeah. And I mean, it's the musical center of the universe, in my opinion. You know what I mean? It's where Hendrix yeah. was born. It's where, well, not born, obviously, but the, the legacy of Hendrix was born. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I've always wanted to go. So Ireland well, um, is definitely on a yeah. to, be, to be happening soon. List. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Do, obviously, the Republic of Ireland is part of Europe. It's part of the European Union. So whether mm-hmm. that uh, uh, would be similar to like traveling to Germany for you in that respect, I'm sure the the paperwork would be the same because it's part of the European Union. Where yeah, obviously yeah, sure. the North is UK, but you can simply walk across the border from the Republic into the North, and there's no checks, so nobody's going to be any wiser, you know. So okay, yeah. If you're doing likes of Ireland, you sort of do both. You do North and South. It's a it's a hundred mile drive. And, an hour and a half, two hours in the car from one major city to the next, you know, so in that respect, and uh, you have totally two different audiences that are ready and willing. And that's easy, man. I mean, I drove from Cape Town back home yesterday, and that's that was three and yeah. a half hours. So <laughs> I'm guys, all good for that. Yeah, I'm you guys are, are well used to the longer drives than us. We, we, oh, we, yeah. We, yeah, yes, desperate. So that would kill me. Um, really? <laughs> and what about... That's what about surprising the, to me. What about music at the moment? What are you listening to or who's inspiring you currently? Um, still Richie Cotson, actually, since last time we spoke. <laughs> Richie Cotson is just incredible, man. He's yeah. got so much. Like I said, for his 50th birthday, he released the 50 for 50 album, which is 50 tracks, which yeah. is ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, it could keep you busy for a minute, for sure. Yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, yeah, killer player, absolutely killer player, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, in I, my I just, opinion, one of the best. I mean, he, yeah. every time I listen to him, it's, it's very alien to me just because it's so good, man. And then he's got the vocal to match it. You know, a lot of the times, and most of the guys that I listen to, um, they don't have a great vocal. They really don't. They, their vocal works perfectly for what they're trying to get across. You know what I mean? It, it, there is no other vocal that would have worked. But prime example is Mark Knopfler. There's no vocalist that could have stood in for Mark in Dire Straits. Yeah, but it's not a, he's not going to win idols. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he, um, he has that such a distinctive voice. As soon as you hear him, you know you know it's Mark Knopfler. You know it's him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And same thing with Johnny Cash, man. Yeah. But now you've got Richie Cotson that can play and he can sing, and it's just oh, yeah. beautiful. Some guys have beautiful. it all. <laughs> yeah, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Leave, leave, leave a bit for the rest of us, for Christ's sake, you know. Yeah, come on, genetic lottery. Just pay out once, would you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I recently listened to the Dead Daisies album. Have you have you listened to them at all? I have not. No. Yeah, it's um okay, a bit of a super group, you know, Glenn Hughes and Doug Aldrich um playing mm-hmm. guitar in the band, and um 
very very good if you if you like Bonamassa and the likes of Black Country Communion it's quite a, a similar yeah. sort of vibe you know okay yeah no, so I'll definitely it's, check it yeah out. worth checking out especially with Glenn Hughes in the band now it's such a, a a similar vibe to the 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 Black Country Communion I thought you know but it's it's, it's a pretty cool album I uh, just recently released there at the end of last month so it's worth checking out okay and we yeah. share a surname so I mean it's I'm sort of obligated to well, that's it that's it exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's to use both with the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, man. <laughs> well, look, Kenny, look, it's been a class talking to you again. Um, we'll obviously catch up further down the line when you have some more exciting stories to tell us and some new projects on, on the go, maybe at the end of January when your next single is out. That'd be great, man. I'm looking and forward to it. And the end of January, is that, is that still summer for you guys? Or are you heading into autumn? Yeah. No, no, no. So no. end of January and pretty much, I'd say pretty much to the end of March, it is devilishly hot here really it is wow. yeah yeah from december that's why our december holiday is so amazing that's why everyone always tries to get to the nearest beach they can it's just <laughs> yeah from december through feb is pretty much the dead of summer for us now. really wow. very very hot yeah, yeah i mean absolutely. we average last year we averaged probably around 32 33 degrees celsius okay wow. for, for the summer so it's it's temperate man it's temperate we get our days that's well over 40 don't get me wrong yeah 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 but yeah 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 we're, we're when we'll be in the that's our our winter that sort of period you know we've had a mild winter the past couple of years up until say christmas time and we tend to get the colder snap on the other side you know january february march so i'll be thinking about you when how I'm, cold how cold are we talking though oh, i don't know i just like you wouldn't necessarily say freezing. It would probably be probably a couple of degrees above above zero. You know. Okay. Yeah, not not too bad, but you know, it feels cold enough. You know? Yeah, it's it's yeah. A, it's a double jacket type of situation either yeah. way. We might get some snow. The snow's not as common as you'd think over here. You might get one or two days of it, uh, but mostly it's just uh, every once every couple of years we get a big downpour, and then that would be it for a day or two, and then it goes away again. You know. So, have you ever experienced snow? Never seen snow in my life. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird for me. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's disappointing. <laughs> but yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's overrated. It's overrated, though. So don't be getting too excited. I mean, I'm going to be, I, I might as well be three years old the first time I see snow. I'm mm-hmm. going to go ape shit. Yeah. You better believe it, man. Yeah. Well, you might see it in Germany or something, you know, if you, depending on when, yeah. you, when you're going. Yeah. When, when you think yeah. about going to Germany, when you're planning? Actually, towards the end of April. So then it's okay. already Spring. warming up there as well. Yeah. 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 It'll be nice. Unfortunately. Europe's nice around then. It'll be nice, nice weather, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. Yeah, good luck with yeah. that. Anyway, with how how that goes. Well, I'm sure I'll speak to you before that happens. Anyway, yeah. man. So yeah, I'll yeah. give you an update then of how the planning's going. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look again, Kenny. Thanks again. Uh, absolute pleasure talking to you, brother. Um, and we'll catch you on the other side. Perfect. Thank you so much, okay. Mark. No I really, really appreciate it. Glad it worked this time as well. Yeah, same. not even yeah. one interruption. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, yeah, technology, great. Okay, man, take care of yourself. See you next time, man. See you later, bye.